We are blessed. Amen. We are blessed this morning with worship, with the presence of the Lord, and with the Holy Spirit who's here to reveal to us the Word. So we are desiring and praying that the Lord would reveal a deeper truth to us through this study that we're doing, which is so essential for being a disciple, but also essential for this fellowship because it is a revelation that God gave to this church. Now, just a comment as we begin. The book of Revelation has a message to the angel of the church at Ephesus, to the angel of the church in Sardis, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And each message to the angel was unique, wasn't it? You remember? So God has a message to the angel of the church of Living God Fellowship. And, and this revelation is part of what the angel of this church wants to minister. Amen? Amen. So it's not just what I want to minister or what Pastor Cheryl wants to minister. It's what the Lord gave to the angel of the church in Great Barrington to minister. And I want to put that in perspective with the Diamond Disciple process, which is part of what we're ministering here. And I'll just go ahead and draw the diamond on the board here. The diamond of the discipling process, how to sparkle and be a diamond disciple. We've been studying the four points areas, um, regions, disciplines, lifestyles of each point. And uh, if you remember, just as a really quick review, last week we studied the point at the bottom, which was called the what? Christ the Christ life. The new life in Christ by which we enter the playing field, so to speak, and begin to move around the diamond. Thank God, God is always hitting grand slams. So we go around it once, and we come to home base, and then boom, there it goes again. Base is loaded. <laughs> and we go around again. So this is a process that God uses to emphasize different areas of our walk at different seasons or during the day. Do you remember the second point? The Word of God, which we studied. The third point, devotion. devotion. And the, this point here was fellowship. Fellowship. Fellows in a ship. Now these are all in a process. They're not separate. They're connected. Even though I'm, I'm teaching on them separately, we have to keep in mind a synergy and an involvement, they all influence each other. And I'll hopefully be able to go on and begin to teach of the interconnectedness of these. Because if you look at a stool with the fellowship, devotion, Christ's life, and word, look. Right. What are they? Those are supporting structures that go from one to another and make the whole system stronger. So these are not separated. These are all integrated. And then we are studying from Ezekiel, from Isaiah, and from Revelations, the four living creatures around the throne that hold four positions before the throne, day and night. And they, are the four, they each have four faces located around the throne. So God is looking at, at these four faces, and that's how it is in heaven, and this is how it is on earth. So we superimpose those four essentials from heaven over this. And the Christ life was the face of a man. The man, Jesus Christ. We studied that last week. 
the Word of God was the face of the lion. The one, the Word has all authority here, all dominion, and will be forever and ever the standard by which rule and reign happens. And then the, the devotion, which we're going to study today, which is the last teaching of these four. There'll be others as we move on. But the devotion, well, let's go to fellowship, which we already did. That was the face of the ox. Remember, the, the servant, the worker, the serving one another out of love, the interconnectedness and the strengthening. And God needs servants, workers, who will work hard to stay connected in, in fellowship. So today, the final one, hallelujah, and the worship songs lined up with this very nicely, the devotional life. So the fourth, the fourth face, fourth face in this process is the face of an eagle in flight. The scripture says, the face of a man, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, and the face of an eagle in flight is the only one in movement. Devot your devotional life is where the movement happens. Devotion is the top position. It expresses your devotion, your emotion, with a true heart of worship. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's one of the interconnectedness. Jesus talked about these, this interconnected. So devotion has with it a life of prayer, worship, Praise and presence. And that's an eagle in motion. So let, let's dive in, shall we? Isaiah 40, 31. The main scripture for this uh, aspect I'm going to bring out today is Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as the eagle. Yes. <laughs> they will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Let me say that again. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word wait here. Oh, let me also add communion here. Basically, the devotion is the area of communing with God in spirit. The word wait here in the Hebrew means to eagerly, eagerly look for, to be twisted up together with, to, be, to stretch, to be collected, to be gathered like many waters coming together into a stream, to be like a stranded rope and to endure. That's from the concordance. So you can see waiting on the Lord strands us together with the Spirit of God so that we are not easily uh, broken apart. So we have the strength of the Spirit doing the work, not us doing the work. And with that, we are stretched out of the earth and caused to be able to fly. To mount up. To mount up means, has the impression of here, you know. <laughs> to 
to mount up. The eagle represents our seeking to soar into oneness with the Spirit of God. Corporately and individually. Putting the life of the Spirit first, foremost. Not putting the emphasis on our feet, which is the ox, but putting our emphasis on our wings. Now, to mount up, the eagle does not need to move its wings. To mount up, the eagle needs something very, very essential. It needs the wind of the Holy Spirit. A disciple cannot mount up without the wind for the eagle to be in motion. Around the throne, the eagle was in motion. Why? Because the whole atmosphere of heaven is filled with the power and presence and wind of the Holy Spirit. If you sp spend some time and read Ezekiel's description again, whew, there was so much stuff happening all at once and the wheels and colors and things and flashes of lightning and the stuff moving all around. He was in the spirit, wasn't he? And when John gets the revelation of the creatures, it says, and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He had spread his wings on the Lord's day. He did not only study his scrolls. He put wing, the Lord put wings on the scrolls of the Word. So we, what's interesting is that, that around heaven's throne, the four living creatures and the four faces of each living creature are all saying one word primarily. Amen. Read, read it in the Word. And it shows that as these four aspects of the discipling process are active in our lives, whenever the Lord, this trust and obey, this song, whenever the Lord draws us to himself and we get a lot of hope and trust and love and we feel close to him, and then he says, then what do you say to my word? We don't have to say, I obey. We say, with the four living creatures. Amen. Brother Arthur Burt, who taught here and we were blessed to know, who was a very unusual, had a very unusual life. In one of his writings, he says, after a chapter, he says, the only word spoken out of my heart will be, Amen. I thought that's pretty good. <laughs> Whatever is spoken into my heart, I say, Amen. I can fly. I can mount up and I can fly. So how does an eagle get his wings, her wings? The same way you do. How do you get your wings? by being born an eagle. Because eagles have wings. So how do you get wings as a disciple? By being born of the eagle. The, the king of all flying things. The king of the birds of the air is the eagle. How did the eagle get its wings? By the birth of the royal line and lineage and DNA of the king of all birds, the one who rules the air, the one who rules in the heavenly air, the one who rules the atmosphere and the spirit, the king eagle, Jesus. A royal 
descent of every child of God born of the king. God means to give us a heaven's life. A life of mounting up. A life of sensing the wind when it blows. And when it blows... That's the life of a disciple. And it mounts us up. To, to do that, the wings of an eagle must be very strong. Stronger than any other bird. God wants his children to be strong so that we can live above the world. Jesus says to the Father, the, the king eagles praise, Father, keep them, for they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. And that's an eagle statement. Father, they are not of this world. Give them the ability to mount up and fly as I do above the world because I am not part of the world. The eagle does not make its nest on the ground. It makes it, its nest at the highest place, a tree or a rocky crag, way up high. It's most comfortable the higher it goes. That's us. So they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up. They that wait. They that are devoted. They that spend time in listening and sitting and quiet and meditation and unity and communion with the Spirit of God. We mount up and are renewed in our strength when we do these things. You see, without a mounting up, without the eagle, we're on the ground. We may be king of the, of the earth and the lion, or king of humanity and the man, or, or king of the stable or the field or the worker and the ox, but we don't fly. But the eagle allows us to see the other aspects of our life with an entirely new eye and vista. For those who study the eagle, they have special eyes to see. So they that wait on the Lord shall mount up. Why? Not only to mount up into the heavenlies, but to mount up so you can see what's happening in your life. So you can see what your day-to-day -day life is like. You can see where your feet are going. You can see a, a greater vista. The eagle can see where something is going, but they can see all around it. So as we mount up, we get a greater view of what our life is about, where we're going, where we're heading. And we get strength as we fly. Now, just to continue with our study of the tribal um, positioning, to superimpose that on top of this, the, the, the north of the camp of Israel, you, re you remember that there are tribes associated with each position of these four. The, the tribe associated with the north was the tribe of Dan, Well, it's worth studying the tribe of Dan to find out about what you're doing as an eagle. Don't you think? Remember it said, it said, arrange the four tribes around the tabernacle and march in this order when you go through the wilderness, you and the ensigns of your tribe. In other words, what is on your banner? Guess what was on the banner of Dan? The eagle in flight. However, 
However, Jacob, in, uh, in uh, Genesis 49, remember Jacob blesses and describes the banner and the life of each tribe and what they're going to fulfill. Well, in, in uh, Genesis 49.17, Jacob says, Dan is a serpent in the way and his banner a flying eagle. You see, the, the eagle is a carrion bird. He flies down and grabs that serpent and flies away with it. Dan catches the serpent in your way and flies away with it in his mouth. So your life of devotion actually catches the enemy that's in your path so that you don't step on it or get bitten by it. And he carries it away in his mouth. So it's not just a quiet life of devotion. It's as we become one with the Lord's Spirit, He comes down and removes the enemy in the way. And if you study the, the banners and the ensigns and the flags of the tribes of Israel, you'll see that there, there's a, that Dan, as an eagle, is victorious. In flight, he carries things away. So part of our mounting up and part of our being successful in this walk on earth is to have the eagle in flight, the Spirit of God. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the, you know, the song. Taking care of all of the other stuff so that we can actually walk free on the earth as if we were mounted up above the earth. Not of this world. I'm not a chicken and I'm not a turkey. And, and we have a book, a famous book, you know, like, yeah, I think it says, Turkey. what is the title of it? Eagles and Turkeys and Eagles. Turkeys and Eagles. If you have a chance to read it, a short book, it will impact your life. It's a prophetic parable. And the, and the turkeys are always wanting to try to get over the fence that, the, that life has put on you to make you a walking person only, not a flying person. And certainly not a flying person with the enemy in your mouth. And the turkey hears the cry of the eagles one day. And an eaglet gets put in with the, with the turkeys thinking it's a turkey, but it grows wings. And it's just longing to fly. And it will never, never be satisfied until it flies with those eagles up there. And I don't want to spoil the book, but you can probably get it for very little on Amazon. It's a short little thing. It's a fantastic book. And the, the lion... Each has a voice. And the lion's voice is what? A roar. It, ro it roars the word. <laughs> Some tongue twisters today. It roars the word. When they came to capture Jesus in the garden and all of the, the SWAT team comes with all their stuff and he goes, I am he. And these mighty big men fall over. He roared the word that he was Christ. The man, what's the man's voice? He speaks. And unto you, dear friends, has been given the oracles of God and the gift of prophecy that you might speak the word of the Lord. On the earth. And the ox we went through. The ox grunts because it's working so faithfully. 
It grunts, and it also lows. How do you spell low? L-O-W, lows. What does the eagle do? It cries. Freedom! I am free! Come up and join me! I'm free! That's the cry, friends, that you will never settle if you don't answer that cry. The effortless freedom that is in the DNA of your birth as an eaglet, not a turkey, and not a chicken laying eggs for somebody else. You hear the cry of the eagle. Just a couple more things and I'll close. Each of these has a gospel that emphasizes its message. You remember the, the gospel associated primarily with the Lion King was Matthew. How about Christ the man, the, the one who came to gather humanity, to bring us together, male, female, neither Jew nor Greek, but oneness, Luke, who himself demonstrated it by being a Greek who became a believer, a Jewish believer. And the ox, Mark. And straightway Jesus went, out of the stable to work. Healed. Immediately you get into healing in there. Immediately he puts hands on. Immediately this person, it's like, whoa, I got to keep up with this guy. He's such a loyal servant. And so that leaves only one gospel left, which is the gospel of John. The one who was devoted to Christ and leaned his head on his breast at the Passover. The one who loved him and who, it says, John actually writes, the one whom Christ loved. <laughs> he was writing his own story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we beheld his glory on the, you know, the majestic mountain glory in the spirit. John beheld his glory. John went into the glory in the book of Revelations. He went up into heaven and joined the eagles. And he got revelation about the history, the whole history of man. Now that's an eagle perspective. I don't have time to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but you should review beginning verse 7 because it says the disciples' life of devotion gives us the essential insights. We gain a higher perspective that only the Spirit can impart. It says we learn spiritual things with spiritual words by spiritual perceptions that no man by himself could know. Our knowledge comes from a devotional life, not from a study of the Word only. So this connection becomes very, very strong. Spirit and truth. We need revelation on the Word. So I'd like to close with, with two things. I want to reemphasize that eagles are carrion birds. 
We have dominion over the things on the earth, and we swoop down upon them and make them our prey. Now, that may sound a little aggressive. That may, may not sound like, you know, but a devotional life makes us, in a sense, aggressive and keen toward darkness in our lives and when we see it. Wait a minute. That thing over there? That thing that's moving? I'm going to fly down and grab that thing. I'm going to help that person. I'm going to snatch that serpent out of that person. And I'm going to fly away with it in my mouth. And I'm going to drop it somewhere. And it's not going to live. Amen. Some of you may have read The Lord of the Rings or, or seen the movies. But in, in the book... The, the true salvation of that parable, which is a story of the history of mankind, is extremely prophetic in every way. Who came to save the day three times in that book? The eagles. They, they, they saved Gandalf from the wickedness of the world. And they came at the very last second to defeat the serpents of darkness. And that's the tribe of Dan in action in that book. So we too must do flyovers. Be vigilant with the eyes of the eagle over our own hearts and lives. And do flyovers. How did you get in here? You're not supposed to be in here. Get out of here. When, when we had Bali Minifica come to Monument Mountain many years ago, some of you may remember we, in fellowship with three other churches, brought Bali Minifica to Mon Monument Mountain. The day that they were up there rehearsing, they'd come. We had a few hours to the performance. They asked me to come back. I had to come back to the church to get something they needed. I walked in the front door, and there were three black snakes right in the lobby facing me. Oh. <laughs> how, how did you get in here? You don't belong in here. I went back and opened the door. I walked by him, I stood behind him, and I said, Get out of my house in the name of Jesus, or else I'm going to chop you up. You think I'm going to leave them in the church for you all? That was a parable. You do the same for me, you do the same for others, you do the same for the church. That stuff doesn't belong here. Fill this house with your glory means the eagles have to do a job. The eagle part of you as a disciple is like that so that we can have a house of glory and heaven can be seen on earth like around the throne. Do I get an amen? Yeah. And that completes the diamond disciple process. But we're going to go on, God willing, and God will give me more revelation. One final closing word. Eagles are prophets. They see beyond. There is a prophetic mantle on this fellowship that God gave us. God gave me a prophetic mantle. God gave Pastor Cheryl a prophetic mantle. God gave this whole fellowship a prophetic mantle because we are eagles and we see and we catch and it's the prophets who defeat darkness. Who defeated Jezebel? Well, it was Jehu, but he was appointed. Elijah and Elisha did the work. So God is calling this fellowship 
through the eagle aspect of a balanced life to speak the word that will set free and cause a mounting up in this region and beyond by the wind of the Spirit coming under our wings and crying, Freedom! Freedom for the captives! Freedom for our families! Freedom for the people we work with! Freedom on the streets! And the evil will be snatched up and carried away by the eagles!